Welcome to my virtual campfire. I'm here today talking to Amber Bennett. She is the owner of Freshies. She's owned Freshies since 2005. It's a place where people come together and like-minded people connect. I've seen people start businesses there. I've seen people brainstorm about trips there. I've seen babies, um, babies, <laughs> people meeting for the first time, like all sorts of things. Like it's just a magnetic, amazing cafe. And um, Amber has made the decision to run for the 34th district seat of Senate. And this is a big deal. Um, she's a business owner, not a politician. And I just want to sit down with her today and find out what made you decide to do this. So obviously I've been in business for quite some time and I have basically seen the ups and downs. Um, I also owned a downtown location for five years and saw that the pandemic, obviously it's still up for uh, at least down there. Um, I've listened to so many other business owners and also customers who've been affected just by high crime, you know, just their kids needing technology at all times. I just want to get back to like organic, just living life and being more of a community. West Seattle and I'm sure Vashon especially, I mean, especially since the bridge is closed, we've become even tighter as a community. Um, and I just want to expand that and, uh, help and get back. I mean, I've just seen the changes from 2005 to now, and it's just incredible. And so I'm just, brother-in-law, he is state senate, and he texted me and said, hey, um, just so you know, the 34th is getting, is going unopposed. And I was just sitting there, and, and I'm a big networker, so I started asking everybody, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And everyone finally is just like, no, you need to do this. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I can't sit there and complain and not actually try. Yeah. So I just did not want him to uh, run unopposed, but I also just wanted to hopefully try and bring us back into the middle a little bit and let's just calm all these heightened emotions and start you know, thinking more, critically thinking, so doing a lot more, um, what is it? Uh, just being smart versus emotional. Mm -hmm. Well, I know firsthand from like running a business in Seattle is it, it's very, there's a lot of red tape and especially when you deal, you serve beer and wine. So you have to deal with the liquor board. And I just feel like there are things you can do that will hopefully help other business owners yeah like tell me about some of the things that you have in your mind well one thing that um i feel like a lot of us business owners getting a bad rap like with i mean the city of seattle though just wanting to raise the minimum wage let's say to 1575 and kind of vilifying all of us because we were opposed to it not because we don't want to take care of our staff because i know that it is just their way to sneak in more money and what that means is, and I've showed everyone from 2021, their final paycheck um, in December, and then their new paycheck with the, with the rise of the minimum wage, they literally are making less. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So basically it's there's just- there's more taxes coming out. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was basically my point. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and you know, I always, I'm happy to help my staff out. Um, we're family. I've always had most of my staff family. Yeah. I mean, aside from my downtown location, which was very, very tough uh, to keep people down there just because of the location and the how not community oriented yeah. was down there. It was just, you know, in and out. Like, I couldn't even remember people's names. It mm -hmm. happened so fast. And yeah. I felt bad because, you know, five years have gone by. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so... Yeah, I just want to really bring back what small business means to this community because if we wipe us all out, like people don't understand, we create an environment that makes this area popular, yeah. which then of course attracts people, which then of course attracts the big, bigger businesses, more corporate businesses. And then suddenly you're depleting everything that made it attractive in the first place. Mm -hmm. and so, well, because West Seattle and fashion are all very community oriented places. I've lived in every neighborhood in the city and I feel like it's 
the reason I chose to live in West Seattle was because of the community. And White Center, I mean, mm -hmm. just see everything that's happened in the last couple of years. I mean, they just were going from, you know, boarded up places to just really, Thriving. really cool businesses. Yeah. And then to have them vandalized. Yeah. And then so the crime just needs to stop. We need to start putting our community first. Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know. So you want to go to Senate and just be like, we need to make changes. Yeah, I just want to fight for um, this community, for their families, for this businesses, everything that makes this place so special. Mm -hmm. One of the ideas that I heard that you were considering, which I thought was a fantastic idea, but is to bring meditation into the Seattle School District. Oh, yeah. And I think that that's like almost revolutionary. Yeah. I mean, because the biggest problem our community has with young teens and kids is mental health. And so if, you know, we can give them tools that um, are in our education system to cope with life, I mean, I think that that is revolutionary. Well, I think, too, the other thing that I'm fighting for, I mean, I have a nine-year-old kid, and they just, I mean, I mean, you got to love technology, all these cameras. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but everyone always knows I'm just the, I'm not into just this constant influx where I want kids to get out and play more organically. And I think because people just, parents don't understand that it's actually more dangerous for a child to be on the internet than it is just to go play outside. We have to give them a little bit more confidence. Um, I've talked to, like I have a younger employee and I asked her, you know, what were some things that bothered her? And she said that all her friends are definitely depressed. And I mean, I got my bathroom at Freshies vandalized. It's been 18 years and it's the first time I have been tagged and tagged all in one day. And I'm only gonna safely assume it was a TikTok challenge. And I've listened to teachers coming over frustrated because the bathrooms, like toilets ripped out, all that kind of stuff. They do these TikTok challenges. And so what I wanna also try and do and, and promote is to make sure that I don't know, maybe on the back end through the parents or through the cell phone companies, but I truly believe when they're in school, they should not be able to get online, period. Yeah. That's just, I mean, let's bring it back and like really start focusing on trades. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's just all trying to get into, you know, the tech companies and whatnot, but you never know. They might be a really good mechanic and they make good money mm -hmm. or they might be a really good, you know, Electrician. Wood, yeah, wood maker. Yeah, we need those people to keep us going, especially as a business owner. How mm -hmm. many times do you need a plumber? Or, yeah. you know, or, and another thing that I heard about the other day that happened at Freshies is your power keeps getting turned off. That's another thing that I would want to propose. I really believe that if corporations or people that are building buildings, or even if the city or state is... Um, renovating something that disrupts your business, you need to be compensated. I've had one time where there's a new building popping up next door. Um, somebody hit a natural gas tank and so they had to close me down for that. And then in order to make sure that the electricity is right for that particular building, they had to close me down for 12 hours. And so I had to get dry ice to put in. I lost the business of that day. And then, of course, I destroyed everything in my fridge because of the dry eyes. <laughs> it doesn't do well with vegetables, I guess. <laughs> I made wow. some soup, but... <laughs> wow. But um, I just think that... And did the city give any, even apology? Anything? So the guy calls me and, you know, just to let me know. And I said, well, what, what's the recourse here? He says, well, you can file something, which I have to do. And I also want to file with the um, owner of the corporation or whatever who's doing the building. And he said that, um, I mean, you could look at the bright side. You know, you're gonna have a lot more customers coming out of there. And I just look at, I didn't look at him, but I was just sitting there. Well, they're also having retail, retail on the bottom built. So maybe there's another coffee shop that goes in there. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like silence. Oh man, <laughs> that's just terrible. I mean, and I mean, just on Avalon, the, I mean, the shack went down with all that mm -hmm. construction. Um, and that was, you know, and there that what used to be duos. Or I don't even know. 
quite what it is right now, but uh, yeah. that has just gone through and through and through, and they've just had a lot of problems with just the city coming in and doing all these renovations, which is great, but you know, businesses need to be. But there's growing pains to yeah. that too. Yeah. I've been really fortunate. Um, like I said, I did lose my downtown location, um, but that's another reason why I want to run. The downtown is just a ghost town and nobody yeah. goes down there anymore. Want to make a difference and you're taking action. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of people will talk about this and I hear people complaining all the time about the city, but you know, you're actually doing it. Yeah. You're running. And so you filed your, your um, run today. Last minute Bennett. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, made a lot of people nervous because um, of course my family really wants me to run. Um, and you know, you and I have a little woo-woo thing going on, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I was told that today numerically was the best day. Yeah. And I, so then, of course, you know, I had some hiccups along the way, which was typical for me. Uh -huh. But um, I definitely am here, you know, and I'm in it to win it. Yeah, Bennett for Senate, 2022. <laughs> in it to win it. <laughs> Make the 34th district fresh again. Jeez. I love it. If you want to find out more about Amber's campaign, visit her at bennettsenate2022.com.